Hi, in this tutorial we're going to use Dijkstra's algorithm to find the shortest path between two nodes on a network. We're going to do this by placing this small grid at each node and we're going to, in the top left hand corner, put a value for the order in which we label the nodes. In the top and right hand corner we're going to put the distance from, of that node from the start and then the bottom we're going to have working values um, of what we believe to be the distance from these nodes to the start. It will become apparent how we use this as we work through an example. So what's the um, steps that we go through to perform the shortest path algorithm? Well, the first thing we do is we label our initial node with a final value of zero, because the distance is zero, and give it order one. We then um, update all the working values from the last node that was given the final value um, with their distances from A. And then, out of all the nodes which don't have a final value, we now choose the one with the lowest working value, and we make that working value a final value, and then record its order of labelling. And then we repeat steps two and three over and over again until the place that we're trying to get to has been given a final value. Finally, when all that's finished, we work backwards um, from that destination to work out the route taken. Now what's important is what's the, what are the rules for updating the working values? Well, um, we're working out the distance from the start, so we take the weight of the connecting arc and add it to the last final value. So that means that if it, we've got to B and we know the distance to B is 10, because that's its final value, and then we know from B to C is 3, if we know that we've got to go through B, the distance we put on C is 13, and it would be the 10 plus 3. And this is important. We only update the working value if it's less than the previous working value. OK, so here's an example for you to try, or for us to try. So we want to work out how to get from A to E. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to give A the order 1 and a final distance of 0. So then what we're going to do is we're going to update the working values of all the places that we can get to directly from A. And those are going to be B, G and F. So the distance to B is 3. The distance to G is 4. And the distance to F is 7. So we now say which one of those has the smallest working value. We can see that B's got a working value of 3. That's the smallest. That's going to become a final value. And this is the second place that we've labelled. So it's got an order of 2. We're now going to update all the working values that you can get to from B. And from B we can get to D and C. So what we're going to do is we're going to update D. Now we already know it's 3 to B, and we'd have an extra 10 to get to D, so that's 13. And for C, we already know it's 3 to B, and we need to um, go an extra 5, so to get to C, it's 8. We now go back again and say which one of all the working values is the lowest, and we can see that that's the one at G. So G has a working value of 4, and that's going to become the final value, and it's the third place that we've ordered. Now we're going to update all the places we can get to from G. And from G we can go to C, and we can go to F. You might think, well, can't we go to A? But that's got a final value, so we never update that one. So from, um, to get from, from A to C, well, we've already got 4 to get to G. We've got the extra 3, which is 7, which is better than 8. So we're going to cross out the 8 and we're going to update it with 7. To get from G to F, that's 2, which we've already got 4 already, which is 6, which is better than 7. So we're going to cancel the 7 and then we're going to update it with a 6. We now look at all our working values, which one's smallest. And the smallest one is F. Hopefully, I hope you're noticing we're doing the same thing over and over again. So the smallest working value is the 6, that becomes a final value. We're going to label it, so we've had 1, 2 and 3, so now it's 4. We're going to update all the places you get to from F, and the only one you can get to is E. 
We've already got six to get to F, we've got an extra seven, so that's gonna be 13. The smallest value now is the um, seven at C. So that's gonna become a final value. It's the fifth place to label. Where can we get to from C? Well, the only place we're going to is D. We've got seven already to get to C. We've got another five, which makes it 12. That's better than 13, so we're gonna cross out the 13 and replace it with 12. Which is the smallest value? Well, it's the 12, so that's a final value. It's the sixth place we've labelled. Where can we get to from D? It's E. 12 plus 2 is 14. 14 is not better than 13, so we don't update. The only place that left is E. So we label that with 13, final value of 13, and it's the seventh um, value that we've given. Now we want to work backwards to work out the actual route we took for that value of 13. And all we do is we say, well, which ones work? So E is 13. Does 13 take away 2? This is the way to get to D. Does that equal 12? It doesn't. Does 13 take away 7 equals 6? Yes, it does. So we must have come from F. And now from F, does um, 6, because the final value on F is 6, take away 7 equal 0? No, it doesn't. Does seven, I'm sorry, does six take away two equal four? Yes, it does. We must have come from G. And G, does four take away four equals zero? Yes, it does. So the route that we took was um, A to G to F to E. I hope you found the tutorial helpful. I've included a couple of practice questions for you to do, and you can find the link to those questions in the description below. Stay in Infield with Winfield.